Hey everybody, it's episode 122. It's so good to see you tonight. Tonight we are concluding our Future Church series. For the past six weeks, we've been discussing one important question. We've talked about that question in a few different ways. We've broken it down. But the question that it all comes back to is, how am I going to build and contribute to the future church. How are you gonna build and contribute to the future church? And this question is very important because as we've discussed all along, every single Christian, every single person who follows Jesus is not just called to kind of go through life, you know, doing whatever, but we're called to help build and contribute to the future church, like the church that is being built and moving forward so that other people can know the message of Jesus. And we've all got unique abilities and gifts and skills that we can bring to the table in order to make that happen. But as we have discussed, we live in a pretty crazy world. I don't know if you knew that or not. And this crazy world presents a lot of unique challenges for middle school and high school students to be able to build and contribute to faith. It's it's tough out there. It's, it's hard to stay consistent. It's hard to stay motivated. It's hard to be a Christian as a middle schooler or a high school high schooler in our world today. It's hard. I'm, I'm acknowledging that and I understand that and I see you. But that's why this is so important for us to discuss some of the challenges that we come up against, but also for us to discuss how the Bible and how God has designed specific rhythms and disciplines to be practiced and applied to our lives so that we can overcome those challenges and help build the church. We've discussed a few challenges so far. You can go back and watch uh, any of these videos if you missed them or if it's maybe it's your first time tonight. And I just want to welcome you and say thanks for being here. But if you'd like to get caught up to speed, so far we have discussed some spiritual habits. We've discussed living life in community with other believers. We've discussed reading and obeying scripture, prayer and fasting. Last week we talked about silence and solitude, and so tonight we are going to be discussing our final spiritual habit for the series. But first, let's talk about one more challenge that is very real to us right now. It's the challenge of exhaustion. We live in this society that basically says if you're not constantly moving and going and getting better and doing stuff and working, then you're going to fall behind and you're not going to be successful. And that puts a lot of stress on us to think we always got to keep doing stuff, that we always got to fill our calendars and our schedules and we got to be working and do our homework and go here and do this and do that. You know, and then a lot of us are like, hey man, I'm young, you know, like I can, I can sleep later. You know, I don't really need that much rest right now. And isn't this what you're supposed to be doing when you're young. You're supposed to just be bouncing back and forth to different things and staying really active. I don't know about you, but I feel the pressures and the stress of a society that's always saying, do more, be more, achieve more, or you're not going to be successful. And if you're tired, you just need to get over it. And I hang out with you guys a lot. And I know that a lot of you guys really care a lot about being successful, about getting an education and doing all the specific things that you have to do in order to progress. And none of that's bad. I do want us to take a step back for a second. And just to think about all the things that we have on our on our plates, on our schedules, doing chores, doing homework, practices every day, and then we got games every thrown in there as well. We go to counseling, we deal with family stuff, we deal with work, we homework. I mean it's and what we inevitably and what we inevitably discover is that no matter how smart we are, no matter how young we are, no matter how much we are driven and motivated to get stuff done, exhaustion finds us. And what I've sort of seen in my own life, but also in other people that, you know, I start to get exhausted. I start to get tired physically and emotionally. Sometimes that's just from consuming so much news and news feeds and taking in so much information that I was just never designed to take in and I just get kind of numb and I get overwhelmed and I, I do that over and over and over again and I just get tired physically and emotionally. And when I'm exhausted, when I'm tired for a long, you know, period of time and I don't really manage that very well, then I become cynical. And cynical is sort of where I get this really downer view of life, you know, where everything's bad, nothing good's going on, and really 
I switch from doing my best in whatever I'm doing to just doing the bare minimum. Maybe you can relate to that. And if I stay that way for too long, then I get to the final piece, which is not good, not healthy, and it's blame. I, you know, either blame other people for those issues, but usually what happens is that I turn inward. Excuse me. I turn inward and I start to question myself. What's wrong with me? Am I just not good enough? Like, why am I not better at this? Why is this so difficult? And what happens is that eventually we get to this point of deep exhaustion. I'm so tired and as I'm confronted with my limits, it seems almost as if who I am on the inside, my soul, just can't even bear and deal with the weight of all the things that are going on in my life. And I think a lot of us would just agree that we are at our absolute worst when we're tired. So how do we overcome this challenge of exhaustion, which I believe leads us to this place of this like spiritual emptiness? How, how do we do that? I believe that we could do this as a community through practicing and learning more about the spiritual habit of Sabbath. We could even call it the spiritual habit of rest. Let me grab my Bible real quick. All right, we're gonna fly through a couple verses real quick from different areas and books of the Bible that all deal with rest. So here we go, Genesis chapter two. This is taking it way back to the beginning. This is the end of the creation story. Thus the heavens and earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Genesis 2 shows us the end of creation, but what we see, I believe, is something really special. God works for six days and then he rests. Yes, even God rests. And what we see is this amazing and beautiful rhythm that God has designed, not just for himself, but for all of humanity. We work and we rest. And God makes the rest day a holy day. We're gonna fast forward one book to the book of Exodus chapter 20. God has just brought the Israelites, his chosen people, out of slavery, and now he presents to them the Ten Commandments. You may have heard of them before. It's really just ten principles and rules for life for this new community and how they're going to live together and love each other. There's some cool stuff in here. I mean, like, don't have any other gods. Don't make any idols. Honor your father and mother. Don't murder anyone. You know, this is cool stuff. But you may not know that one of the Ten Commandments is actually about rest. This is what it says in Exodus 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall work and do all of your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work. You or your son or daughter or your male servant or female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Once again we see this. Remember the Sabbath day. Six days of work and then a day of rest. And remember to keep that day holy because God has set it aside as holy. A lot of the Ten Commandments say, you know, you should do this or you shouldn't do that. But this one begins with remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. It's almost like we as humans are going to be prone to just progress and progress and progress and keep going and moving and getting stuff done and checking things off the to-do list. Keep doing stuff because that's how you're going to find your worth. And God is like, hey, remember the Sabbath day. Remember the rest day because you guys are going to naturally forget about it. The Sabbath is pretty much the only one of the Ten Commandments that our culture brags about breaking and not doing. People are always like, man, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I haven't re taken a day off and blah, 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 and I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, cool, I get it, you're, you're working hard, that's great, but are you healthy though? Or are you super tired and physically and emotionally drained? When God speaks of rest in the book of Exodus and when rest is mentioned throughout the rest of scripture, and it's mentioned a lot of times, it is always paired with us being able to understand and be aware of God's presence. Sabbath comes from the Hebrew word 
Shabbat, which literally means God has designed humans to operate a specific way. It is to work and then it is to remember to take time to stop. And this isn't just a day off to do whatever you want to do. It is it a day where we specifically avoid the trap of thinking that the only time that we are worthy is when we are creating or working or doing something. It is to resist that. And it is to take some time to rest and worship God, to simply be aware of his presence and to move away from the cynicism of everything's bad and I'm just giving, you know, my absolute worst and bare minimum to opening our eyes to the beauty of God's creation and to us being thankful for all of the things that God has blessed us with. Hebrews 4 chapter 9 says this, So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. And students, I believe that if you would step into it, there remains a true, deep Sabbath rest for your soul that God provides. And I know right now so many of us are so busy doing so many different things and sometimes it feels like we're just physically and emotionally drained. And no matter how much sleep we get, no matter how much downtime we have, we still don't feel like we're really renewed and restored the way that we should be. And I think that's because a lot of times we have our own ideas uh, because we forget the Sabbath. We have our own ideas of what we think is going to restore us and refresh us. And so we turn to things like our phone. We turn to things like other devices or just filling our schedule with other things that we think are going to make us happy only to constantly return back to this place of being physically and emotionally drained. Our squad, I want us to be a community of rest in a culture of exhaustion through the practice of Sabbath. Here's what I want to encourage us with, because sometimes this can be a hard concept to understand. What does it mean to actually set aside a day or part of a day to truly rest? Because I'm not just talking about getting more sleep. I'm not just talking about taking a vacation. I'm not just talking about that stuff. I'm talking about a true deep rest for your soul as the inner parts of you can catch up to all of the demands and tasks of your life. And so many of us just walk around restless. We're not content. We're greedy. We're worried all the time. We're incredibly anxious. But I believe as Hebrews chapter four says, there remains a rest for us that God provides us. And it's gonna feel weird because it is so different than what our world says that we should do as we set aside distractions so that we can rest and worship as we are aware of God's presence. So here's what I want to encourage us with. You don't actually have to make a Sabbath box, but I think it would be really important for every single one of us to take an inventory of the things that we often run to that we think are gonna provide us rest, but the reality is they don't restore us like we want them to. And so when we choose to participate in Sabbath, I think we all need to take some things and throw them into a metaphorical box for that day or for that time period because the reality is a lot of times we just get so distracted and we're gonna be tempted to pick and pull and use things from this box on our Sabbath. I'm actually just gonna throw a couple things in here that personally are tough for me and that need to just get away when I'm trying to find rest and fulfillment in God. First one, my car keys. I'm tempted to put stuff on the calendar all the time and anytime I have free time and space, I'm like, ooh, that's gotta get filled up with something else so I can be more productive and I can meet with more people. When I'm taking Sabbath and day of rest, I'm getting to a place, whether that's at home or the beach or somewhere, and then I got no more temptation to go and run around and do other things. I've gotta set aside some time to get away from the busyness of traffic and running errands and doing other things that just distract me. Number two, that's my phone. Dude, this, come on, man. This thing always is, is calling my name. It's tugging on me. Hey, come look at Instagram. 
come do this, come play this game, come do whatever, and I'm like, this thing does not lead to rest in my life. You know, I get on it, and I scroll for 30 minutes or an hour or whatever it is, and it feels good in the moment, but I get off of it and I'm like, oh man, now I just feel even worse. Now I feel even worse about myself. Now I'm even more cynical than I was before all of this. This thing's gotta go. It's distraction and it gets me inwardly focused instead of p picking my head up, picking my eyes up, and looking around at God's creation. I know, I play some games every now and then. I like the game, all right, it's whatever. But look, if I'm being really honest with you, gaming is a way that I fill up my time so that I don't have to think about other problems and deal with things that are actually going on in my life. Man, I know you love to play Minecraft, but is Minecraft a thing you like to do or is it a thing that you run to to avoid all the stress and pressure of life and it feels like you're getting away to refresh and be restored but after a five hour session or a day long session you leave going oh man yeah those problems are still there i still got to deal with those nothing wrong with gaming but on my sabbath and day of rest i'm always tempted to be listening to a podcast or to a message or to music or something just to learn more and to be better. That goes away for this day because I'm actively fighting against the world that tells me I have to learn more and do more and be more and be better. This is so hard and when we do this, it's gonna feel like a detox, like what? I'm setting aside all these things. This is like what I do all the time. I know, that's, that's the point. Setting aside things that culture tells us that we should do all the time so that I can pull away and truly stop so that God's rest can fill up my soul. What needs to go in your Sabbath box? Reality is we all got things that we think are refreshing and restoring us, but the reality is we're not experiencing the true Sabbath rest that comes from God and from God alone. I wanna close with this, Matthew 11. These are Jesus words right here and I believe that they're gonna provide rest for you today. Jesus says this in Matthew 11 verse 28, come to me all who labor and are heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's be a community of rest in a culture of exhaustion through the practice of Sabbath.